Welcome friends, I'm Jan Cope, Provost of the Cathedral, and it really is my joy to welcome you to this virtual pilgrimage in Resurrection Chapel. And it seems wholly appropriate to do so in this Easter week, following the glorious celebration that we had of Easter Sunday. Resurrection Chapel is one of three chapels on the crypt level of the cathedral, which carry out in iconographic themes different stages in the life of Jesus of Nazareth. Bethlehem Chapel tells of Jesus' birth. The Chapel of Joseph of Arimathea carries out the theme of Jesus' death and burial. And Resurrection Chapel gives expression of Jesus the Christ's victory over death. This small chapel, built in the Norman architectural style, is a powerful contrast to the soaring spaces on the nave or main level of the cathedral. Here, there's a sense of quietude, of simplicity, even mystery. There's little natural light, but there's brilliant color in its mosaics. The resurrection of Jesus is portrayed above the altar in a half-dome mosaic. The risen Christ is seen in radiant white, arms raised in victory over death, holding a cross and a banner of victory in his hand. Golden rays from the rising sun radiate against the brilliant blue sky behind him. To the left, by the open tomb, an angel kneels in adoration. At the right, two Roman soldiers there to guard the tomb or are asleep or their eyes are veiled to what is happening. The mosaic was created of Venetian glass by Hildred Meir, whose daughter Louise posed for the figure of the angel. This mosaic interprets the gospel stories of Easter morning. The stone is rolled away from the tomb. The tomb is empty and Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Thus begins the resurrection story carried out in the next six panels. Rowan and Irene LeCompte, stained glass artists, were chosen to design the mosaic wall panels, and it took them approximately a year and a half to complete each panel. These mosaics tell the story of Christ's appearances after his resurrection. The first panel nearest the altar tells the story of Mary Magdalene in the garden, as told in the 20th chapter of John. She's the first person to see Christ and she falls to her feet to embrace him in joy. Note the rapture in her face. The city in the left corner calls to mind where she will go to announce the good news to the disciples. The second panel, depicts the walk to Emmaus as described in the 24th chapter of Luke. The biblical narrative refers to two persons, one named Cleopas, traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They encounter a stranger on the road who is the risen Christ, but they don't recognize him until the breaking of the bread. One of my favorite details in this mosaic is how Jesus' halo or nimbus changes from the road scene to the breaking bread scene, the moment in which Jesus is recognized. The third panel depicts the appearance of Jesus in the upper room, also described in the 24th chapter of Luke. Jesus comes among the disciples in his first words, our peace be with you. At the center of the design, Christ is depicted in a most dramatic and vibrant pattern and color. His dark cloak, symbol of the grave, is pierced by the shining radiance of his tunic beneath. The fourth panel depicts Jesus and Thomas in the upper room as described in the 20th chapter of John. In this panel, the artists have captured that moment of confrontation when Thomas, with his own eyes, saw Christ standing in their midst. Near the top of the panel, women bring food, and one of the disciples holds flowers. 
They are lilies, signs of eternal life. The fifth panel depicts Jesus' appearance to seven disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, as described in the 21st chapter of John. Jesus is seen observing the scene, looking out over the water. He stands in quiet response as the disciples observe him from their boat. He tells them to cast their nets off the other side. The final panel depicts the last appearance of Jesus as described in the 28th chapter of Matthew. The artist has placed the image of Christ near the top of the composition. He's seen as powerful and believable, but not entirely of this earthly life. The Lecomps are represented in this final mosaic, with Irene appearing as the dark-haired woman and Rowan is the man in the lower corner. This final panel appropriately culminates with the Great Commission, the sending of Christ's followers out into the world. Bishop Alfred Harding and his wife and infant son are interred in the chapel. His dog Kiddo is shown at his feet, symbolizing the bishop's fidelity. He is shown sleeping with an open Bible in his left hand. On the pages are inscribed in Latin the opening verse of the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Our reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He's been raised from the dead, and indeed, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with me on this pilgrimage in one of my favorite chapels in the cathedral. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up its countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen. Amen.